Ask anyone, or Google, which museum is the most famous or largest museum in the world, and hey presto, to the surprise of literally nobody, it's the Louvre in Paris. And why not? It's home to over 70,000 square feet of exhibition space, with over 35,000 artefacts and artworks from prehistory to today, and regularly sees millions upon millions of visitors every year in what is widely regarded as the world's most popular destination city. And that's all excusing the fact that the site the Louvre sits on has been built upon since the 12th century, and the Louvre itself is a work of art. So yeah, the Louvre's got it going on. But with so much museum, so many exhibits, and so little time, where should you focus your efforts? What are the best works of art to see at the Louvre? Didn't you read the title of this video? Come on, I'll show you. But before I do, make sure you like and subscribe for more top travel tips. All right, très bien, allons-y. Okay, let's get it out of the way. Yes, the Mona Lisa, the world's most famous painting, is in the world's most famous museum. Why is it famous? Most arty types will say it's because of her smile, but it only truly became famous when it was stolen for a couple of years, and since then it's become the frequent target of agenda-wielding vandals. Painted on a second-hand canvas by the one and only Leonardo da Vinci sometime between 1503 and 1517, the portrait is assumed to be of Lisa del Giocondo, whose first name was probably not Mona. This is the single most popular attraction in the Louvre, so expect crowds. It seems one can either be overwhelmed or underwhelmed by this tiny painting, and never just whelmed. For bonus points, make sure you check out what's known as the Raphael sketch from 1504, also in the Louvre. This beautiful pen and ink sketch was created by a young Raphael when apprenticing under Leonardo, and is thought to be a draft of a draft of the Mona Lisa. The Venus de Milo is one of the most famous sculptures in the world, and has no arms. But when you consider that she's over 2,000 years old, and in as beautiful a state as she is, she is nothing short of phenomenal. Discovered in 1820 by a Greek farmer and a French sailor, this ancient Greek statue was offered to French King Louis XIII, who had it placed in the Louvre. It is widely regarded as a representation of the ancient Greek goddess Aphrodite, aka Venus after the Roman syncretization. The goddess of all things beautiful, lovable, sexy and victorious, she's over six and a half feet of Parian marble, and no one quite knows how old she is, who made her, or what her arms were doing. Recent scientific analysis seems to suggest one hand was holding the apple of discord, based on a marble hand holding an apple being found alongside the Venus. Arms or not, the impact and influence of the Venus de Milo has had on European art, culture and history cannot be understated. While the abundance or absence of whelm can be felt at the Mona Lisa, it's pretty hard not to feel anything when studying the raft of the Medusa, especially if you know the story behind it. Painted by Theodore Jericho between 1818 and 1819, the raft of the Medusa depicts the survivors and casualties of the French naval frigate Medusa. Under the command of an inexperienced captain, Medusa, a ship of war carrying over 400, ran aground off the coast of northwest Africa on the 2nd of July 1816. This huge and beautifully detailed painting depicts the last improvised life raft of survivors calling for help when their rescue on the horizon is sighted. It's a truly stunning and harrowing painting, and still heavily sanitized. The real raft originally had 146 men and one woman aboard. When rescue came, there were only 15 survivors. After being abandoned by the frigate's launches and lifeboats, the raft was left adrift, suffering through storms, drunken rebellions, mutinies, starvation, and even acts of cannibalism. The events, when finally told, shook the French nation, prompting Theodore to put brush to canvas to immortalize the horror on the raft. The Wedding at Cana is another sizable painting, rich with beautiful images and intricate details. It's just mad to think that this magnificent painting is nearly 500 years old. It was commissioned from the painter Paolo Veronese by the Benedictine monks of the San Giorgio Monastery. Finished around 1563, this famous work of art depicts THE Wedding at Cana, where everyone's favourite Abrahamic carpenter turned water into wine. This is one of the most wonderful paintings to come out of the Renaissance. 
It certainly takes some liberties with the depictions of people in the Middle East over 1500 years after the fact, but it is a fascinating window into the contemporary consensus of what the world looked like during Jesus' lifetime. And while there are so many fascinating details to pick out and admire in this gorgeous canvas, you can't help but focus on our boy JC staring right back at you with that, yep, that's me kind of look on his face while Baba O'Reilly plays in the background. Out here in the fields! It's easy to be blown away by the fact that the Venus de Milo is over 2,000 years old considering its condition, but I find the winged victory of Samothrace, aka Nike of Samothrace, just that bit more impressive. Also well over 2,000 years old, this depiction of Nike on the prow of a Greek trireme was discovered on the Greek island of Samothrace in the Aegean. This Parian marble statue of the ancient Greek goddess of success lords above you at nine feet tall. The detail is minute, especially in the wings, and even though it's missing its head, arms, and trumpet, that somehow makes Nike all the more striking. Speaking of striking, it doesn't get much more striking than the bare-breasted liberty leading the people. This is easily one of the most iconic French works of art of all time, and a hugely influential and inspirational painting. And no, this doesn't depict the Les Mis French Revolution. Painted at around three months in 1830 by Eugène Delacroix, this stirring oil on canvas is a commemorative romantic depiction of the July Revolution of 1830, which saw France's last monarch removed from power. In October of 1830, the Louvre hosted an exhibition for contemporary paintings. Liberty leading the people was one of them, and captured the hearts of all who saw her. She's found her main home here ever since, serving as an eternal symbol of liberty and the French Republic. From one iconic French chapter of history to another, the coronation of Napoleon probably found its place in the Louvre because all the imperial plundering under Napoleon helped contribute to its collection. Nonetheless, Jacques-Louis David's masterpiece coronation painting is a symphony for the sights. Painted by Boney's official painter, this splendid scene depicts the coronation of Napoleon Bonaparte to Emperor of France in 1804, and was finished around 1807. The painting, not the coronation. This is another huge oil on canvas painting, crammed with exquisite detail and beautiful colours. Not only is it a visual feast, but a historical one as it is a fairly accurate representation of the actual event, and includes a number of real historical figures, including Josephine, Napoleon's siblings, and even the Pope. On the relative topic of Napoleon and revolutions and republics, you might have some kind of idea why the French have revolted at so many monarchs if you check out the French crown jewels on level one in the Dinon wing. But James, are these really works of art? Well, if you judge art as something that doesn't need to do or be anything except exist to provoke feelings and thought, then kinda. Unless you consider sitting on a French head or being held is actually doing something other than provoking feelings in scalps and palms. And you don't want to miss this astounding collection of around 800 pieces of royal regalia. Here you'll find trinkets, treasures and gems, some even from the Middle Ages. And the room? The room they're sitting in? That's a work of art itself. The Lace Maker by legendary Dutch master Johan Vermeer simply depicts a young woman hard at work making lace. Completed around 1669, this Dutch Golden Age painting is a charming fly on the wall snapshot of someone engrossed in their work and is one of my favourite Vermeer paintings. Dressed in a yellow bodice, armed with a pair of bobbins and a pin, Many find the focused expression captured in this young woman's face is all the more captivating and ultimately more endearing than the Mona Lisa. The depiction of the natural light is just as astonishing, feeling almost photorealistic in places. There's a good chance you've seen this last one somewhere before, because there are replicas of it all over the world, including New York City, Berlin, and The Hague. But more likely than not, you've seen miniature souvenirs of it in a lot of art and history museums, or even at law schools. That's because the Code of Hammurabi is one of the oldest legal texts in the world. At first glance, there's something a bit eerie and ominous about this seven foot tall black basalt plaque featuring an image of King Hammurabi at the top. Under it, there are about 4,130 lines of text laying out laws and punishments for a variety of activities ranging from marriage to murder and fair wages to slavery. 
thought to have been created and added to between 1755 and 1790 BC under the first dynasty of Babylon, it is the longest, most comprehensive, and best preserved legal text from the ancient Near East, making it an essential stop for history buffs. These are just 10 of the most famous works of art and artifacts to see at the Louvre. There are thousands more treasures to explore, and many of the permanent collections rotate in and out of display, so whenever you visit the Louvre, you're bound to see something new. The best piece of advice I can give is to plan ahead. There is so much to see here, and even if you aren't visiting in peak season, the Louvre is liable to be busy. So make sure you research what's currently on display, plan a route if you can, and see about booking tickets ahead of time. That's all I've got for now. Thank you for giving us your time, and stay tuned for more Via Traveler's goodness.